Welcome back to the Immaculata Church Project here in St. Mary's, Kansas. Uh, today we've just received off of a shipping container our five liturgical bells. It was an exciting day here. These bells arrived just in time now for our ceremony coming up on September the 10th where we will baptize these bells, consecrate them, and make them fitting for liturgical use. His Excellency Bishop Fillet and Father Fullerton, our district superior, will be here on that day. And here in front of the church, we'll set up the five bells and they will be blessed in, the, in an official ceremony. So for that ceremony, anybody's welcome. Uh, September the 10th at 10 a.m. here at the Immaculata in St. Mary's, Kansas. Uh, you're certainly welcome to come. We'll all be standing here out in front of the church that morning. And as you can see, and we'll talk quickly here about some of the progress, but you can see here in front of the church, a lot of concrete has been poured over the last few days and weeks. This uh, main esplanade in front of the church and the front driveway in front of the church has all been poured to make it possible for all the faithful to come in for that ceremony. So now we'll walk into the church and we'll look at a few quick building updates uh, on our way into the sanctuary where we will talk about the last bit of our liturgical artwork. So here on the inside, you can see that they have been working a lot on these main Romanesque arches that will uh, separate the main body of the nave from these side aisles. Remember, each of these is going to be wrapped in a limestone uh, with a capital at the top. Also, we haven't really mentioned much, but there, you can see they're framing out all the confessionals now, too. Remember, we have four confessionals here on the south side four confessionals on the north side, so eight confessionals total in the church. So that's kind of some of the main progress going on down here at the nave level. We'll go up into the sanctuary and take a look at some work up, being done up there. So here's, we're coming up into the sanctuary from the, one of the side chapels. You can see a tremendous progress with these beautiful green granite columns that have been put here in the sanctuary. For those of you who have followed the project, you know that in some of the images, we have a number of columns and pilasters going throughout the church. Those are all wrapped in a, a Casablanca limestone, uh, whereas we saved for the sanctuary this beautiful green granite uh, that's wrapping all of the columns here. So you have kind of a view here into the ambulatory back behind the main altar area. And we'll take a walk back there and show you some of the uh, wall space where the last bit of artwork is going into the sanctuary. So now as we're going through the ambulatory, which is this walking space back behind the main altar, you can start seeing these big spaces on the wall with arches at the top. Uh, for those of you who, again, have been following the project, and especially those who were at the April event last year, where we gave you that triptych, that opened up with all the artwork. Now you begin to see how big these spaces are where the lamb, which I'll explain in a minute, where the lamb, the elders, and some of the artwork is going up back here uh, behind the main altar to help give emphasis to the sanctuary and uh, draw your attention to the main altar. And we'll describe for you that artwork here in a second. So now we're going to uh, talk to you a little bit about the last bit of artwork, uh, at least the last major pieces of artwork that are going into the church. As you know, back behind the main altar on the walls we just described, we have a very beautiful scene uh, that's painted and that will be placed on the walls back there from Apocalypse chapter 7. It's the scene of the Paschal Lamb. The Paschal Lamb in victory who is slain and who has redeemed us and as well as the 24 elders who are there giving worship to the Lamb. Now, this, as I said in a previous video, this whole book of the Apocalypse is a story of our redemption. This Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, who is now the mediator between God and man, who is all things to us men. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. So the scene back behind the altar portrays our Lord's victory. Uh, you can see from the image the blood that He's poured out for us into the chalice, and it's the perfect scene to put back behind the main altar because it is what happens on the altar. Every Mass we know we have our Lord's victory, but sacrifice, um, His victory is on display, shall we say, and His blood is sacrificed for us. So it's a perfect scene 
to put back behind the main altar. Surrounding this lamb, we have in the other arches, we have the 24 elders. They represent both the 12 tribes of the Old Testament, the 12 apostles of the New, so sort of a summary of all men, shall we say, of the Old and the New Testament. And what are they doing? Well, they're giving worship to the Lamb. We see them with thuribles, incense rising. Those are the prayers of the elect who are coming and the worship of those who are already in heaven, worshiping the Lamb. But yeah, even, even the prayers of, of the faithful here on earth, giving praise to the Lamb. The whole idea is the entire mystical body of Christ is there giving worship to the Lamb. The faithful on earth united with the saints in heaven. Then up much higher above this whole scene, we see a few other images of the artwork. Um, there above the architrave, there's a little frieze area, and we see in that space the book with the seven seals, which again, the Lamb of God alone has the power to open each seal. That sort of represents the different ages of mankind, and so this Lamb of God has the power to open up each age with its difficulties and the help that He gives. We also see the lion. We know our Lord is referred to as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yes, He's a lamb, but He's also a lion. He also um, he expects of us to fight for him. And so he's the lion of the tribe of Judah because he has power over life and death. And then we have the angel up in the frieze section as well, as long as, as well as the angels surrounding the lamb. Again, these angels are there to um, show the, that they're there to anoint the heads of the elect, to welcome souls into heaven, and to stand around the throne of the lamb of God, to shall we say, give him praise and worship as well. And then lastly, up in the ceiling, and this scene is already painted and on the ceiling of the sanctuary, we have the Spirit of God. We have the Holy Ghost, who, as the book of the Apocalypse says, and the Spirit and the Bride, the church, say come. And they say come to the elect, and they bring the elect through grace into heaven. So all in all, we have a beautiful scene here in the sanctuary. It's a scene of sacrifice for the Mass, but a scene of victory for us who are united to the Mass. Um, it's a scene of mystery, it's a scene of holiness, a perfect summation kind of of everything that happens in the church. And then lastly, um, just as you probably remember up in the cupola, there was a little entablature going around with words that describe the scene that happens up in the cupola. So similar down here at a lower level, uh, budding up to the sanctuary, we have an entablature as well that describes exactly this scene from the apocalypse. I'll give you the translation of the words that are going to go run around that entablature. The words are, And they sang a new song, saying, The Lord is worthy to receive the book and to open the, the seals, because He has been slain and has redeemed us for our God in His blood. And from every tribe and tongue and people and nation, He has made us a kingdom for our God and priests, and we will reign upon the earth and we heard the voice of the angels. A perfect summation again of the whole scene that's happening here behind the altar. So that sort of wraps up our progress update for the month as well as the last description of uh, our major liturgical art going in the church. Thank you for your interest in the project. As you know from our last financial update, we have 93% of the funds for the project, so we got just a little bit further to go. Please continue to support the project, spread the word, and for those of you who can come to the September 10th event, we'll see you there. And for those who can't, we will certainly give you a video update of all those happenings next month. Thank you and God bless.